Glenny Balls joined the podcast. Thank you for giving me some of your time today. Okay, yeah. podcast has begun. Okay. Yeah. Carol, How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm okay, you know. Forward. Uh, we'll go like one or two days. Like we're supposed to go in if you have something to do, kind of. But um, I mean, I've been traveling. A lot. I've been doing this show with a few of the guys at work, Caleb and Rowan are their names. It's called like a Sunday conversation, not going to lie. Pretty great gig. We <laughs> like go to um, different people out in the country or whatever, like celebrities. And they interviewed them. They'll ask them like funny questions. And it's a Sunday conversation. It's on our pro football show. So I literally just sit there and eat a Sunday. So it's not bad. So I've been traveling a lot for that, like during the week getting some traveling in, which is nice. It's kind of weird during coronavirus, but yeah, it's been day to day, bored, stuff. Yeah, I bet. I, when you were saying that you were going to Chicago um, when we were texting, I was like, for a second, I thought you meant like you were gonna, having an interview for another job. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, like Glenny Balls is barstool. You guys are like the same, like symbiosis. Listen, I can't I, even. I, I got nowhere to be. I could, I could guarantee you right now, anyone listening to this, <laughs> Unless I get fired, I'll be at Barstool by whole <laughs> I love it. Um, so I wanted to ask, like, first, where did you, where'd your nickname come from? So I think my nickname subconsciously came from Entourage. I've never really realized. I realized that a while, like a few years ago, actually. So even before I got hired at Barstool, like, my, like me and my friends like joked around. We were just like joking, like gambling, joking around stuff. And we were like, oh, Glenny Balls is a funny gambling nickname. And I think we realized, I realized eventually, after I got hired at Barstool, my first watch through Entourage. Are you an Entourage person at all? I mean, I watched it, and I like was always super excited for Sundays. But if you were to give me trivia, I'd probably fail miserably. Oh, so but I enjoyed uh, it. So good. So I watch it all the time. And I remember my first watch after I got hired. I'm watching it, and the guy, Billy Walsh, the crazy director, he, after that uh, Median movie they made, uh, did horrible, he directs porn. And his porn director name is Wally Balls. And I was like, okay, subconsciously, I guess that's where I got it. And also in Goodfellas, like the scene where they're walking through the, uh, the bamboo lounge of Goodfellas, there's a guy named Sally Balls. So I guess subconsciously, that's where I got it from. Okay. Yeah, you're a bit I'll of like, um, like a pop culture like genius. I do like pop culture. I, I just want, also want everyone listening to this know, you just call me a pop culture genius. I appreciate that. No, for sure. I'm like when you of my pop culture knowledge. It is. It's really impressive. It's vast, especially for someone of your age. Like, you know, like, you know, everything, like everything. Oh, I know. You were saying friends trivia is like oh, friends, friends trivia. I'm the best. I'm the best. <laughs> Ask me any questions. Google it. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know shit about like right now. I, I guess I'm an old soul. One could old say. soul. I like it. I've got my Spotify playlist. There's not many new, there's not much new music on there. Are you one of those people that like plugs your Spotify playlist? Like, what's up with that? I not nah, my my Spotify. Play, I think my main playlist only has like twenty six likes. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, you just made me plug my Spotify playlist. Oh, but, there you go. I mean, I haven't done yeah. it either. I don't know what like the point is. Can you monetize it, or is it just to get no. following? I think it's just to have people pick up your vibe. Like, I feel like a Spotify playlist is is a vibe. If that makes sense, it's a vibe. I've been saying vibe a lot more recently. Like I used to hate on people that say the word vibe, and now I'm a vibe. I'm, I like saying vibe. So I, I, I like a good vibe, and I think my spot on the is a good vibe. It's like very uh, summery, like American Pie kind of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. Leonard Skinner. It's actually called Summer Comma Bro. Summer Bro. Great there you playlist. go. Check out yeah. Lenny's Spotify playlist. Yeah, <laughs> Let's see how many likes we can get. It's a fantastic playlist. So, how did you? How did your interv- interview process go? For Barstool, because I would imagine it's like unlike anything else. So what's it like interviewing? So, 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 so scary. So, um, so I've been like the biggest Barstool fan for a while now. Like I remember I was in my friggin' dorm in like Albany, going to U Albany. You're, you, you know what? What? Yeah, yeah, my brother. I wonder if you went there when my brother is there. My my brother went to U Albany too. I I started in 2014, so I remember like I was in U Albany. I hated U Albany. Hated upstate. And I'm just like sitting in my dorm, like watching Barstool videos, like eating lunch. Like this fucking sucks. Just, I hate Albany. Huge, huge Barstool fan, though. Had the flags, had the sweatshirts, whatever. And then I hear that they're moving to New York. And I look, and I, so I had transferred from Albany at the time. I was going to Baruch, which is a business school. Fox was not doing anything businessy. Horrible. <laughs> they didn't even have a major, I don't think. And um, so I was going to Baruch, which is 23rd in Lexington. 
And I saw like someone posted like Barstool's address that I was going to be. And it was uh, 27th and 5th. And I was like, that's right between Penn Station and Baruch. Like, that's perfect. Definitely going to try to get in there somehow. And then I saw Erica, our CEO, tweet out, hey, we need uh, New York interns. I was like, perfect. Replied. And then I'm re- replying back and forth with Erica that I think is Erica. Found out it wasn't even Erica. It was like our office manager at the time. So I was like horrified, like trying to be tipping my responses. And then, but, but like I said, I'm, I think I'm emailing the CEO. So I'm like, okay, this is pro- I think this is just like a business interview. Like, I don't think it's for content at all. And so at, at the time I was doing Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday classes at Baruch with like one for Friday class would be like 11 to 1130. And it was like stupid. Like, I forgot what the fuck it was. It was, it was a horrible <laughs> class. I had to go from Long Island to the city for a half hour class. It was fucking miserable. <laughs> but so I get the, meanwhile, as I get the interview and I'm horrified, I'm like, this is like my dream job, whatever. My mom, well, nice lady, drives me into the city that day, waits outside for, as I go to class, and then drives me to the Barstool office. So as I'm driving there, I'm looking at like the Barstool Snapchat and I see our, my guy, Caleb, who actually hired me, like the coolest guy in the world. He's like interviewing everybody on Snapchat. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a content thing, and I have no idea. I'm like, this is horrifying. And the scariest part was our old office. So I get there, our old office, you tell, you get off the elevator, and everyone is sitting right there. So, like, all these people you follow are sitting right in front of you. It's horrifying. Were you starstruck at all? Very starstruck, because, like, everyone is sitting right there. Like, we, <laughs> I was actually there yesterday to do a video. We still have, like, control of the office, kind of. I was there to do a video yesterday. And I'm just staring at that elevator, and I'm like, this is the scariest elevator possible. <laughs> So I get off the elevator, do my interview, and Caleb is interviewing us. And Caleb's asking us, like, fun, dumb questions. And he says, are you fast? And I'm like, you know what? For my size, I actually am pretty fat. So he's like, all right, let's go check it out. We go to the street. My mom is still parked out front. I'm horrified. Oh, my I'm God. horrified as they bring me outside with, like, cameras. Do a 40-yard dash on the sidewalk on 27th in Manhattan. My mom is still sitting there. Like, literally, in the video, you can look, and my mom's car is there. And then, um, yeah. so. He was like, all right, you're hired. And he really didn't have the authority to hire me, but he hired me anyway. <laughs> so then they bring me into Dave, though. And I'm like, this is the scariest thing in the world, just walking into Dave. Because you're sitting there, and obviously you know you're going to Dave at some point, and they just send you in. And Caleb, I walk in, Caleb's like, oh, he's already hired. So I guess Dave had that, whatever. And then I'm like, all right, I'm hired, I guess. I walked out of the room. And then I like popped back into Dave, which like is the craziest thing to think about just to be like, Hey, can I go home now? Or am I like, fruity? like, what can I do? Like, which is crazy to go ask Dave that. Then thankfully our, um, I should give Gaz more credit. I literally should give Gaz my life out. This guy, Barstool sales guy. He's one of the original guys, OGs. He's in there with Dave. And as I'm walking out of the room, he goes, wait, do you have any nicknames? And I was like, Oh, Gunny balls. And I was like, thank God he did that. Because if not, I feel like there's nothing to lore without the name. <laughs> No, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the hiring story. I knew it wasn't going to be anything typical, just like by following you guys on social media. Like, it's not like you sit down and like a student tie and you give them a resume. That's kind of what I thought. You really? I never would have imagined that. Like, I, that's what I thought because, like I said, I thought I was emailing the CEO and mm-hmm. I, I, I was thinking, and I have nothing, fucking nothing, like business wise at all. I'm horrible. <laughs> I don't even have a major. Oh my God. I've seen that video and it's fucking hysterical. So I don't even have a fucking major. Oh, it's so good. Um, were you like always like outgoing and like being, I guess, willing to take like those like big social risks? Because like that's really unnerving, right? Like you're getting filmed for the first time. A lot of people freeze up when they see a camera. You're having to run <laughs> down a block yeah. in New York City being watched um, by a bunch of people. Were you or you just like in the zone because you wanted it so bad? Not in the zone. I'm not a zone guy. Not a zone guy. What is I'm that? I'm not mean? a zone guy. I don't know. Like. There are people I've, there are people I'll talk to like interns or people that now work with us mm-hmm. that what for example one of my best friends at work his name is Za I don't know if you've seen him he's the, he's an African little person yeah, great yeah. guy um when he came in he like came to visit and he like wasn't hired yet and he ran into radio and like jumped on the table and like screamed that Dave should fire my friend Smitty he should fire me I'm like that's so not Za but he was like oh I got to like do something to get noticed and me I was just like I don't really know what to do right now. I'm just going to be myself. And I guess it worked <laughs> out. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't have a character by any means. I'm literally just myself. So. so it wasn't like 
anything out of the ordinary for you. Like, I'm no, just and then I call. I think I caught on pretty well. I wasn't. I wasn't that scared. It was. I never was really scared about being on camera. You were. No, I never really was. Oh, you weren't. Okay, because yeah, you, like yeah. you spend a lot of time. Like you do. Um, I mean, I see you on all of their social platforms, but you have that burger. Are you still doing the burger show? Or occasionally. 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 Yeah. I'll play around with it sometimes, but like I, I've had my uh, my camera guy. He lives in Boston. He'll come down to Long Island every like few weeks, and we'll go shoot a bunch. But I, I've been doing that a little bit. Uh, we have like an esports team and whatnot. A lot of stuff now, and then a lot of gambling stuff. We are in like Philadelphia. We've been in Philadelphia a lot. I was going to ask. So, are you like relocating there, or are you still going to stay? Oh, so what it is is you have to. So we so Penn, we got invested with Penn National. Penn National invested in Barstool, and Penn National Gaming is a company that has a bunch of casinos. So they have casinos in Pennsylvania, and that's currently Pennsylvania is the only um, state where the Barstool Sports app is legal. Mm. So we can legally gamble. We go to Philly. So we have like a nice apartment in Philadelphia that we go to usually during the weekends, live stream the games. It's a fun time. I like Philadelphia. It's a great city. My mom used to live there for a while. She was a awesome very city. big um, gambler, so she loved the casinos there. She's like spend every we come back legal gambling. There we go. I'm terrible no, legal, at it. You'll lose gambling, all your money. No, gamble legally, not legal gambling. Sorry. Yeah, no, you'll you'll lose all your money. I'm terrible luck at the casinos. I think like I just I'm not like a big risk taker. I'm a big, very risk averse. So like I get very nervous, and that energy just goes everywhere. And it's I I could picture you enjoying like a casino game. You yeah? Which one? I picture you. I could picture you playing craps. I don't know why. I let see. That's the one game that I actually don't mind. I think it's because it's like a group. Thing, right like everyone's participating and if you have like a good vibe they were going to use vibe if you have a good vibe at the table then everyone's doing well that's why i want to play craps i don't know how to play craps but i want to learn you just do the pass line and then you learn while you play i, I gotta learn how to play craps because i play blackjack blackjack's okay mm-hmm. but it's it, I, I get tensed up if i'm not with all my friends it's a there's, there's a table of seven of us and you have a little fun it's fun when you're playing with all your friends and mm-hmm. then if there's the random people they get angry at you i'm like i don't want to yeah. That's a good thing, though, with craps people. So if you don't know what you're doing, you just literally go to a good table where everyone's, like, shouting and having a good time. Just put your money on the pass line and just ask, like, what's happening, and everyone will kind of teach you as you go along. I, I like a good, like, drunk roulette. I love walking out of a club. Like, I'm sure you've been to AC a few times. Mm-hmm. Like, AC, you walk out of the club. Like, my favorite's Premier and Borgata. You just walk out, smash, like, 3 a.m. and just roulette away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They That's know what they're doing. That's one of things. But I, 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 I'm shocked you're not a casino person. I picture you like in a Vegas casino just having a night. I think maybe it's because I've spent so much time at Vegas casinos because of all the awards shows. Are you a Vegas person? Not really. No. That's shocking to me. I know. I mean, what what gives off the Vegas vibe? I could picture you enjoying Vegas, but like not enjoying Vegas, if that makes sense. Like... I could see you like it. No offense to you. I could see you liking like the uh, like places I would like, like the more fun, less like fancy vibes, mm-hmm. or like I don't know, like more bars. You know so what's what no, totally. Actually, I was gonna say I've done like I've done both. So I've done like all the fancy restaurants, and like I feel like you spend way too much money, and it's I don't know, it's just not enjoyable for me. But I have been to one of like the first steakhouses. I think you've probably. Have you been there? It's like uh, I've only see. I've only Vegas I went to Vegas. One. I went to Vegas when I was eleven and thirteen. I loved it. Uh-huh. I, I remember I wrote a book report about it in like the fourth grade. My teacher must have been like, "What the fuck is this kid doing?" <laughs> like, it's about Vegas. And then I've only been one more time when I was twenty-one, but I didn't really do it fully. I went when I had just turned twenty-one, and me, my dad, my uncle, my best friend, and his dad went. So it wasn't like I went to Vegas. You know, I got I got to get back to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I yeah, got to go with my friends really. Everyone has to have, like, the one big Vegas blowout before you can yeah. decide. If- I want to go on, like, a Wednesday, Thursday night, get a table at a club, maybe Friday, do the mm-hmm. whole thing. But eventually, when, once, once this is over, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to and document the entire thing. Oh, I, I don't know if I could document all the Vegas stuff. I don't know. <laughs> all on the Snapchat, or it didn't happen. We'll see. Um, so what is – what's a – I guess it's different now because of um, everything with COVID, but what was a typical day for you at work? Like what's Barstool like? So a typical day for me before COVID, I had a, um, so we, we had still have it. We had a Sirius XM radio show called the cousins, which is Dave's dad, 73 year old Jewish man, wonderful guy, his cousin, Murray, also 73 year old Jewish man, wonderful guy. And then our host, and then me. So it was great. It was like, we had that at 9am every day. 
So I was had to be in the city by 9 a.m. And it was awesome. It was it's only like being in an episode of Seinfeld. It's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do that. And then I maybe go do a go shoot some burger videos. We have like a like I'm on like an our esports team. So we have our um esports room, like our gaming room, go in there a little bit. And then whatever else would just happen to come up throughout the day. Like I'm not really a blogger. I don't I don't blog much. I'm more of a video content. So like whatever comes up is what I'll do. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, when the day to day, like that's going to come back. We'll see. I don't know. So with the, are you um, like heavily involved with like the esports division? Cause obviously that's growing. I, that. I honestly don't know much about it. No. But like we have an esports team and I'm on it. So like. Is that what you do on Twitch? Yeah. Okay. So I, like I'll, I'll stream like Call of Duty, Fall Guys, whatever, et cetera on there. So I'm on our esports team. I just personally don't know much about esports myself. Like I like playing video games. I just don't know about the whole esports scenario. Oh my gosh! When I've like seen some of the uh, stadium, the stadium videos, and like how yeah, much money know. these guys are getting made. Well, that's bad. I don't know anything about it, but I know. Oh, what well, you should watch. It's like NFL on steroids. Kind of feel like I don't know. I feel like I've noticed this a lot, like meeting athletes. Well, and I even like my cousin played baseball in college. Mm-hmm. Nothing crazy, but he played baseball in college. Loved baseball. And he was never really a baseball fan, if that makes sense. Like, never loved the Mets, never loved the Yankees, just loved baseball. So, like, I like playing video games. I don't know anything about it. Right. You're just like, give me, give me a yeah, mission. Probably get, probably get more into it, but. You probably should. I mean, you could be multi-millionaire. Well, we have, well, we have people that know it. We have people that know about it. I just personally don't. Have you met any, like, the really famous, like, digital athletes? Um, Esports athletes? I'm trying to think if we've like played with any of them. I don't know. I don't think so. so. I think actually one time there was there was someone that was very famous that was in the office. I forgot who it was. I don't know. You still get starstruck when you like meet people because you have like uh, big actors come on. I saw that you did a couple of videos with um, Adam Richmond. I love that uh, guy. Yeah, I was I was starstruck by him. I mean, I used to have like a Man vs. Food shirt. I have his book. Like I was a huge Man vs. Food guy. <laughs> We got to do a video with him to do a burger thing with him. I met him, I think, twice now, and he's he's a sweetheart. He's a very cool guy. Like him, there's a lot of cool people. There's not many people that I will say are assholes. Him, we did our video at Lure Fish Bar, and then just on the street, on the corner afterwards, we talked for like an hour. He was a great guy. Oh, I love to hear that. It's, it's so disappointing when you have like such a crush on a celebrity, and then you find out that they were a dick from someone you know. Yeah, I mean, I, that I, I would say, when have I been starstruck? I get starstruck to people that. When I tell them I'm starstruck, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm-hmm. But there's people that I love. So, like, people that I've been starstruck by. Who, like, I play games with him now on Twitch, but I've still actually never met him. It's Jerry Ferrara, Turtle from Entourage. Okay. Like, I've seen him in the office, and I'm like, holy shit. That's <laughs> and I just don't go near him. I'm terrified. Obviously, like, in our old office, probably three years ago now, two years ago, the Jersey Shore Cats came. Everybody came. Mm-hmm. And it was legitimately like the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Like, all of us <laughs> shut down. It, no one realizes like how fucking like Jersey Shore when it came out was the biggest thing in the world. Oh yeah, and I love Jersey Shore. So then, like, I just kept my head down. I was like, I am horrified. Like, no way. I love them all so much. I couldn't even like look at that. It was terrifying. And um, so then I was starstruck by, and then my like one of my main guys is Artie Lang. I love Artie Lang. Who's that? Howard, Howard Stern. He used to host Howard Stern, and he like has movies. He's a comedian. Mm-hmm. But he when he came one day. I, like head down didn't say a word so there are people that i am starstruck by like i don't even go up you just freeze one of the actually one of the saddest things recently was so i was telling you about the summit conversation thing i had I'm, I'm doing yeah and i had to go to florida to do one with doug flutie and at the same time our other guy caleb had morgan wallen in nashville and morgan wallen was doing a uh they were doing a golf match celebrity golf match against our golf guys so mm-hmm. it was Morgan Wallen, this guy Hardy, I don't really know him, Jake Owen, it was arranged by Jake Owen, and Darius Rucker. And Darius Rucker's like, he's like my guy. Like, I fucking love him. Uh-huh. I'm already who you got right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love Darius Rucker. So, and then Za, who I told you, he's from Africa. He doesn't, like, know American mm-hmm. culture, really. Mm-hmm. He's, like, stuck in, like, bubblefuck Florida, like, Melbourne, Florida. And I see Za on the golf course with fucking Hootie. And he's like, he's like <laughs> me at the time, he's like, I'm so, I feel so bad because I don't know shit about any of these people. And I'm like, you're with fucking Hootie. That's my guy. I was so sad. Like, Hootie, I'd be starstruck. If I, if I met him, I'd be very starstruck. But outside of that, 
but that's that's the thing. It's like it's weird, not weird people. Like Gary Strucker is very famous, mm-hmm. but it's the more random people that I'm starstruck by. Like if I was in a room with Brad Pitt, I don't really think I'd be starstruck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess like, it's all relative. Like, but yeah, like if I'm in a room with Daniel Day Lewis, could could care less. Right. So it just depends. I think I'm the same way too. It's like people that. I mean, I'm sure you've met famous people. Yeah. Yeah. And some people like I do the same thing. Like I freeze and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know know what to do. And I'm going to stumble, fumble all over my words. So it's better to just like avoid the person. And then there's other people that I think I would be just whatever with. It's just like. Who have you been starstruck over? Ooh. Um. Hmm. I actually can't think of anyone off the top of my head. I can tell you one of the um, Kardashian whatever's, like one of the brothers. Who's the one that DJs now? I think there's only one. Isn't Rob Kardashian the DJ? Well, he's not a Kardashian. He's a Jenner, actually. I think. Oh, just, I just, Jenner? Yeah, yeah. I just lump everyone in together. So I met that guy, and I wasn't really impressed. Not going to lie. Hot guy. He is a very good-looking man. Hot guy. For sure. But the problem is, is he knows it, right? Yeah, I guess so, but he's still a hot guy. I, mean, I think you guy. lose points if you know if you act like you're. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the hot guy role. I I have to have a good personality, so I don't really know. But uh, I have no idea. But um, what else was I just gonna say? Who else was I just gonna ask about? Oh, by the way, another example of being starstruck. So, my dad's like favorite person ever is George Brett, third base for the Royals back in the day, like one of the best third basemen ever. He randomly came to the office a few years ago and brought his buddy who like runs a barbecue company and he came in with barbecue and he was just the fucking coolest guy in the world. Like the coolest guy in the world. I just came and he brought his own like 12 of course light. We're just hanging out, talking with everybody. And I was going to do a burger video later that day. And he was just like, Oh, what do you do? I said, Oh, I do this burger series, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to shoot one a little bit. He's like, Oh, if we have time before we leave, I'll call him. I'm like, All right. We can have George around here. So he came and he's the man. Like I have his number now. He randomly called me randomly. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Weird. <laughs> well, like one day I was at my uh, cousin's for Sunday dinner and I give my phone ring and it's just George Brett being like, I might be coming to the city next week if you want to hang out. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> so it, it's George Brett's like, it's fun when they're really cool. Like you were just saying, mm-hmm. George Brett is like the coolest guy in the world. Uh, who else did I say is very cool? Oh, Adam Richard is extremely cool. So yeah. Actually, someone that I was a little bit starstruck with was actually Jason Ellis. Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, really? So he's, um, yeah, use your technology. Um, 2020, he, I could do it. I don't know. I wonder how his podcast he's an has Australian to... satellite host? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had like a really popular um, show. I wonder how it does now because like obviously everything changes with podcasts. Um, Australian satellite host, skateboarder, mixed martial arts fighter, truck racer, boxer, rock star, actor, and author. That's some, I've never heard of him. That's just... He's a wild yeah. man. Like, absolutely wild man and um one of my really good friends is what is and was obsessed with him so he followed me on twitter and this was back when i was like not really a a name yet i was still kind of finding my way as being like a you know d-list yeah i get you whatever um so he followed me on twitter i was like holy shit jason ellis followed me i'm gonna call like see if i can get um get him on the phone, whatever, call him to the radio show. So I call in and I talk some shit and he invite invites me to come to the studio. And I'm like, no fucking way. So I, at this point, like he's like, you know, top whatever radio shows. And like, so this is at people. his height. Yeah, this is at his height. I, I'm not going to say, I don't know if he declined or not. I mean, I haven't been keeping up. I, I'm, I just don't know who he is. Right. But we'll say like, you know, in his, in his prime. And so I go to the studio Benji's there from Good Charlotte, and I was like such an emo chick, so I fucking loved him. And I was like, "Oh my god, like what is this? This is so cool!" Um, so he brought me into the studio, and I was like, "I don't know, I was probably shaking. I was so nervous." Um, but I got him to autograph a book for my friend with blood, which is it's something he did. And I was so I was like, "He said that you're a bitch if you don't do it." And he just did it on air, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is the wildest moment of my life." Bro, where did he get the fucking blood from? His hand, he cut himself right there on his, he cut his hand, like, no, yeah, just signed the book with his blood. And my, bet my friend has this book, like, oh, fucking framed. Ew. I, he's an intense, wild man, wild man. So, wait, so you were just saying, um, like, when you were first getting started, when did you, like, get into the game? How old were you? 
Oh, I think, well, it depends on when you, when you start, when you start counting. So I started like webcamming, I don't know, it was like 19 or 20. Oh. So like when you were like, quote unquote, famous, still are, but when, like, what were you around like my age, like 23, 24? Yeah, I would say like my, like I started to pick up some steam around then for sure. Okay. That's, that's such an interesting thing to think about. Cause I was even a few weeks, a few months ago, probably I was talking with Jerry Ferrara on Twitch mm-hmm. and he was telling me like what, season one of Entourage, he was 23. Mm-hmm. my age I'm like imagine fucking like me being on entourage <laughs> at my age it's crazy do you consider yourself famous no i know it's a weird question Absolutely. to ask people like ask me all the time you don't know how to answer it but like you can't you definitely fit the criteria theoretically i fit the criteria with like a spe- specific group of people mm-hmm. like if i'm rolling around in if i'm in topeka kansas i don't expect to be stopped but I'm also a very like noticeable person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a large person, so <laughs> I, I feel like I get stopped more than others. But I don't. I don't consider myself famous by any means. I think you're famous, Glenny. Thank you. Appreciate it, but I don't think so. So, what's your dating life? What like? Are you allowed to share that with me? Sure. Why not? I mean, are you single? No. Oh, I'm there's. Of, I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I have no idea. This is. I'm okay. gonna answer that. Okay. Okay. Well, let's say. Um, let's say Glennie's, you know, single, mingling. Like, how do you date when you have such a, like, you have a big presence on social media? Is it weird? Like, is it weird for the other person? Do you tell them, like, hey? Well, I mean, I, I will say a, a good move is always to not say a thing. Uh-huh. And then have people, and then be like, oh, like, what's your Instagram? And then they'll follow me, and I'm like, oh, my God. And then, uh-huh. That's always a good feeling. But, uh, no, I mean, no, it's not that weird. It's no. Shockingly average. Okay. Shockingly average. Do you have people come up to you when you're on dates? Yes. Plenty like, balls. Which, I fucking love you. Which is pretty pip. Mm-hmm. That's a good feeling as well. Definitely scores points for sure. Yeah, no, that that that's definitely a pimp feeling. Like actually, one of the uh, most pimp feelings of my of my day was I was at a Ranger game one time, like sitting right behind the goalie, like two rows behind. And I was on a date, and like the ice people like stopped and like said, "What's up?" Like. As I was saying there, I was like, all right, that felt pretty thin. Not going to lie. See, you definitely, you fit the criteria. You're like a little bit famous. You just got to, you got to lean into it, Glenny. O-list, O-list celebrity. O-list mm-hmm. internet celebrity. Hey, it's all relative. There's like certain parts of the world, like you said, uh, your buddy didn't even know who friggin' uh, Hootie was, right? Exactly. But I mean, like around here, like Long Island. You're like the man. Obviously a huge, no, I'm not the man. You're, You're saying the Long man. Island's obviously a huge parcel place. Like, Philly's a huge parcel place, so whatever. Like, w- w- Wilmington, North Carolina. I don't know if that's the biggest parcel place. <laughs> um, or is Wilmington a parcel place? Is that what you're asking? I would assume not, right? Um, I don't think we're... I don't think so. I feel like I, Myrtle I Beach... I, so I went to school in Myrtle Beach. Huge barstool place. That's actually when I first learned about barstool. People are obsessed with it there. Myrtle Beach? Yeah, coastal Carolina. I've, I've heard of it. I know people like go there. I think they Don't have like a years. good football team. I say, yeah, they have a good football team. I think. Um, I'm not supposed to say that though because the football team was actually really good. They're ranked in like the top 25. Yeah, I never went to a single game. I think they like just became like a, like a top division one team. I feel like they were too. Like as soon as I graduated, almost, which is like you know eons ago. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I never. I've a lot of social anxiety, so I never like really went to like any sporting events or anything because none of like my few friends that I had were into sports and I'm very bad at like meeting new people. I'm just very you, sorry. I keep asking you questions. You're supposed to be. No, people. take the reins. It's a conversational. Were podcast. you, um, were you in a sorority? I would have been the girl that the sorority made fun of. Yeah. I can't picture you being in a sorority. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. I like, I moved around a ton, so I didn't, I never got clicky, I guess. Like, I don't know. I was always like the victim of mean girls. And I feel like a lot of mean girls joined sororities. Trash bags. Right. Except one of my best friends, was in a sorority, so I shouldn't, like, talk too much shit. But I feel like she's the exception. I mean, I feel kind of the same way about frats. I'm not the biggest fr- fan of frats. I don't know. Were you ever, I, like, you were? No, 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 never even pledged, no. I, like, like, on the outside, like, the idea of it's, like, fun. Like, I would, like, grow up, like, watching, like, American Pie movies. Yeah. And be like, oh, it's awesome. And you just hang out with all the boys and drink. Obviously, it's fun. But, like, I hate the, uh, I feel like it gives people – a false sense of entitlement that shouldn't have a false sense of entitlement. Mm-hmm. Like, no offense to my little cousin. Hopefully, he doesn't watch this. But my little cousin, he's a little, he's a little, he's whatever. 
and he went to off school and joined a frat. And now he like he's roaming around like being mean to everybody. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like it's part of like that whole like herd mentality too, right? So if you have like the queen bee at the top that's making you be mean to all of the incoming sorority sisters and everyone kind of just gets in the same mentality and they're like this is acceptable behavior yeah like one of the one of the story i always tell me i always tell people when we talk about frats is so my best friend was in a frat out of school in queens and he lived in queens not like their frat house in queens but he also lives here on long island like his house is here Mm -hmm. so we all went to belmont one day which is a racetrack right near here where i could do the belmont stakes and we all came back to his house here so it was long island house not the frat house and some kid we went to high school with was also in that frat. And um, I'm, I'm, I was drinking a beer or whatever. And I was like, oh, I need another beer. And they were, I like, got up together. And they were like, oh, wait, the pledge will get it. So the pledge brings me back the beer. And one of, one of the kids tells the pledge, you got to flick that 100 times. And I'm like, you're not in the frat house right now. You're in like his family house. I'm like, I fucking grew up in. You're not flicking that thing 100 times. Jeez. And- and then the kid is like yelling, you have to do it. It's about fucking respect. I'm like, what the fuck are you morons talking about? The poor kid is flicking the fucking can a hundred times. It's the, that's, that's the worst. That's why I hate frats. Yeah, it's not a healthy mentality to get stuck no. in because you carry that over into the real world after you're out of university. Like what, what, who the fuck just hands someone someone and says, flick the can a hundred times? Who? Oh my God. It makes me so angry. It's one of the few things I get mad over. Yeah, so you don't, I never see you mad. You're always, you were always a very fun profile for me to like, watch especially in these times because it's just always positive and it's fun and yeah there's not much to complain about but that i complain about i complain about in softball when people try to throw out fat people at first base that's fucked up <laughs> that's really it there's not many other things to get mad at mm-hmm. yeah i don't know what it is about frats maybe it's just like the testosterone because the hazing process is totally different from you know the frats versus like the sororities like the sororities they'll me- fuck you up mentally like i heard some crazy stuff um it was a Long Island school one of my girlfriends went oh. to. Um, mm. At Delphi? Yes. That's right at my house, 10 minutes away. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I oh, spent yeah. like weekends there, like all the time visiting her. Uh, oh, yeah, Long Island girl. Yeah, so uh, they had crazy sorority stories. Like, so, like, the men, like, they'll physically haze you, right? Like, they might, like, beat you with a broom or, like, whack you in the head. I don't know. Like, I've heard, you know, physical torture stories with that. But the girls, they would have, and this is all, you know, secondhand hearsay, whatever, on campus. They would have the girls um, come into the frat house naked and... Oh, is this, is this about to hear about a marker? Yes! That, yeah, that's so fucked up. I, well, I've heard it from, like, other, from other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, I think like, that's worse than hazing. Oh, my. It's psychological warfare. Are you kidding me? Especially at yeah, that age. Uh, I'm, I'm not about that life. The Greek life, you can have No, it. so mean. So, I'm so good. mean. I'm all set. It carries over. There was this one guy, um, like, my husband and I, like, we were trying to kind of, like, I don't know, be friends with this one couple because they were friends with another friend. Um, and we just had like mutual interests and he like acted like the beer thing. It was the same thing. Like he was like, Hey, Eric, go grab me a beer. And Eric's like, are you fucking kidding me? Go get your own beer. And as soon as he said that, it was like the friendship was over. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an odd thing. Like I, one thing I always hated when I was at Albany was when the frat guys would wear their frat shirts, like out to the bar. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, then when I got hired at Barstool, I would wear my Barstool hat around a lot. Uh I admittedly did. And now I'm like, you know what? I don't wear it out anymore because I feel like it's kind of the same thing. So I will yeah. say I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on that forefront. Yeah, but I don't like see anything negative with Barstool. You guys seem to be having a pretty good time. Oh, no, not negative. I'm just saying I feel like the frat thing is to like show up that you're in a frat. And then if I'm wearing a oh. Barstool hat out, I feel like that's kind of a trash bag move working there. But I don't do it anymore. No, I love it. I am- I retired from wearing the Barstool hat out. Oh, keep doing it. I support No, like I'll wear it like, on, like, I'll wear it, like going to work. But like at a bar or something, I no yeah. longer wear it. Yeah, take it off. Yeah, I'm straight Hawaiian shirt, maybe a hoodie to blow shot. That's about it. Are you still making your um your Hawaiian line? What's up oh, with yeah. that? Oh yeah. When? When does the drop happen? So I'm gonna give you the official scoop right now because I don't really know. Ooh. I don't really know much about it. Okay. Honestly, so we have on uh, in Black Friday we have a Christmas themed shirt coming out, which I'm very excited about. It's a Christmas theme Hawaiian shirt. We have like Santa elves on there, whatever. It's cream. It's rayon, which is the material I love rayon. I think it's a great <laughs> material. So that's my first one. And then I think me and Dave Prez- El Prez are like, we're going to hammer out 
a spring line. It's going to be fucking nice. I can't we a, wait. Like we have a potential like logo that looks fucking sick. The logo is awesome. If it all comes into fruition, the spring line is going to fucking bang. Like it's going to be nice. Oh, I'm stoked. Are you doing, are you doing like the winter Hawaiian shirts that you said you wanted to do? So like I said, we're doing the Christmas one. And then I think we may do like a national pizza day one, maybe a St. Patrick's day one. Mm -hmm. But as of now, I think we're focusing on the, uh, on the old spring line and the spring line should be nice. Cause I think they're going to be legit Hawaiian shirts, like really nice Hawaiian shirts. Oh, so that's I my main thing. Like I genuinely want this to like rival Thai Bahama. <laughs> it's amazing. Like I don't want, like I want, even if you're not a barstool person, if you have no idea what the fuck barstool is, I want you to be like, that's a nice shirt and buy the shirt. Oh, it's so, so good. We'll see. Like that, that's the goal. I want it to be like Tommy Bahama Falls Beachwear. Amazing. That's, I mean, Falls Beachwear is a great name. That's the name of it. No, it is. It's catchy. We have, we have high hopes. I'll, I'll text you the possible logo I have later. It's fucking. Ah, I wanna, yeah, it's I'm fucking super fire. stoked. I want to see. I was watching some of your, um, your clip on Instagram and you're talking about the cheeseburger in paradise. Yes. I, like, I fucking love that. I will buy. And so does yes, this mean I, I officially can get you to model one of the Hawaiian shirts? Oh, done. Okay. That's, I'd be so honored. That's, I'd be honored, Glennie. Okay. okay. You're yeah. officially I'm modeling one of the shirts. Yeah, Thank 100%. You. I'm um, going to have, I'm gonna have to get my, my few celebrity friends to model the shirts for me. So you're in. Me, Lisa Ann. I'll get you, Lisa Ann, and Asa to model them. Here we go. I think that'll look good. Those, that's my big three. Mm-hmm. Do you still keep up with Asa? Occasionally. Mm-hmm. Occasionally. I love Asa, though. She's yeah. Regard. She's great. Last time, last time I talked to her, she uh, flaked on me to do her freaking Instagram live video thing yeah i was looking forward yeah. to that hey asa fuck you <laughs> I, I was actually traveling and i got to the airport early that day to be there to do it you know, from the airport and then she canceled on me i was like damn it shit but we got we got to reschedule i'll do that eventually yeah i want to see i was um i went to check out your guys's podcast because you guys were oh we did do a podcast like a while ago i, I love that like asa was like my best friend for like four months i know you that's how i actually discovered you i was like who is this guy he's really what a funny night that was by the way oh yeah 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 the concert. Beautiful Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> One, oh my, oh the first time, yeah, yeah, that was like. Oh yeah, I think you whipped me on stage at a strip club. Wasn't that fun? I did, and then you're like, "Can you make sure that that wasn't recorded?" And... Yeah, I was a little scared. That was, <laughs> I was a little scared that I was gonna like go viral, and be getting whipped at a strip club. It probably would be pretty funny if it did. I know. I now I really wish that there was a video of that, even just like for us to relive it. Yeah, yeah, like freaking now, like four years later, if there's a video of me getting whipped at a strip club, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know. Good whatever. Time. Yeah, just make a press release. It's fine. Yeah, no press release. I don't know how to do a press release. I mean, you got a guy. I'm sure you got a guy. No idea. <laughs> There's got to be a guy in the office. I legitimately like go into could not like go into like that type of stuff any less like. Well, when it comes scenes, drama, I don't know. Like, no, when it comes, but that's one of my favorite things though about Barstool is your guys's press releases. They're fucking amazing. Whoever oh, the press releases like that day that we have for Dave. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's like this. Uh, one of our guys in Team Fortnite makes those. Those are fucking hilarious. Those Brilliant. Are like if everyone handled like a social mishap that like, that's way. like for fun though. That's like not like a real press release. It's fun. Well, Right, but I feel like everyone should handle them like that way instead of being like so apologetic sometimes or embarrassed like when his sex tape came out. And if you oh, read yeah. that that press release, it's fucking brilliant. It, it was. Yeah. I mean, it's that's like why we cannot it. say whether it was or was not, <laughs> you know, Dave, but we can say that the specimen in the video was in top athletic shape. And I was like, this is the best thing I've ever read on the internet. That's why he's the king. I mean, he's the funniest person in the world. That's exactly why. Like, he knows how to handle everything. Seriously. Even, even a few weeks ago when the Patriots, like, I forgot what game, the Patriots got embarrassed. And he was just coming over from Miami on a private plane, just, like, posting videos. Like, I, I have no internet. I can't. I don't know what happened in the NFL today. But it, he's, he's perfect. I mean, he's the funniest person. He's the king. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No arguments there. Um, yeah. So are you, like, what's in the future for Glenny Balls? Are you going to do podcasting? Like, you only did the two episodes with, with Asa for the um, Super Curious, so. We did a few, but I mean, I mean, I personally, I like the idea of podcasting. I just don't have, like, an idea of podcasting. You know what I'm saying? You gotta just start. Yeah, but I feel like everyone, I don't, don't want to just have a podcast about, like, nothing. No, it's definitely hard, for sure. In the first one. I, I would like a podcast. I think podcasting's fun, but I think it's a great way to showcase personality. And you have a but, good voice, too. Do I have a good voice? I don't you think have, I have a good voice. No, you do have a good voice. You I've often been told I, I mumble a lot and I talk fast, which I do. You do but, talk fast, but that's sorry. like a northerner thing. 
Aren't you from the north? I am, but I've been down south so long that I've kind of mutated, if you will. So North Carolina is considered the south? Yeah, Wasn't anything the below the Mason-Dixon Dix- Mason. line. Mm-hmm. Wasn't Maryland below the Mason-Dixon line? Yeah, but... Yeah, so I guess that argument doesn't really hold. Ha. Huh. But I'm very so, far, far... So, fill me in. What's next for Eva Lopia? Oh, okay. Or can I... Do I call you Eva Lopia anymore? You just call, with Dan- can I call you Candace? Yeah, I'd heard for free. I'm going to call you Candace. Yeah. All right, you're I'm officially right. Candace. Oh, okay. There, see, Later, I'm going to text you, hey, Candace, here's the logo. Our relationship just went to the next level. Yes. It did. Now it's more personal. Um, I don't know. Just seeing where the podcast goes, I've had some pretty, like, stellar guests line up. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens with that. It's like, it was the, probably the scariest thing I've done. It was scarier than porn, for sure. Really? Yeah, because obviously that's going to get critiqued. But when you put, like, your thoughts out there... Like, it's just so much more personal. And then yeah. if someone's like, you're fucking stupid, like, that stings. Like, so, also with porn, like, are we fully, we're on the OnlyFans train full? Yeah, full yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. For Love sure. It. Yeah. Love it. I feel like OnlyFans, like, kind of just killed porn. They were just like, fuck the man. You're gone. You're gone, yeah. porn. Mm-hmm. Fucking OnlyFans. What a place. Right. And it just, it shows you, from a performer standpoint, it shows you where your value is and, like, how undervalued you were in mainstream i'm like this is the best thing i've ever done i remember when i first switched i was like what am i doing my career is over no one's gonna know who i am um but it was awesome do you know how many off the bat off the top of your head you know how many subscribers you have um on my paid account it's just under nine thousand. what the fuck and my free yeah it's pretty solid and then my free account is um almost to 20 what? That's fucking so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go, go only fans go. Yeah, right? Go only fans go. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, and then I would say like long term goals is I would like Candace to surpass Eva financially. Like that's when I'm like, like yeah, okay. yeah, that's when I'll be like I, love that. I did something fucking. I love the alter ego. All right. But, yeah, <laughs> it I helps. I don't have any goals, I don't know. You have to have some goals. I have no goals. I don't know if that's bad to say or not. I, I'll no, just, it's not bad. I'll see, where the, I'll see where the road takes me. You're young. You know what I mean? I feel like that's part of... That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I just turned 24. Like, I'm one of the youngest people at our company. So, like, whatever happens, happens. Well, I mean, you're going to crush it. YOLO. I know. Yeah, YOLO. I, I mean, there's not many... There's, like... I don't know. I, I, don't, have, I don't have goals. I, I mean, yes, you do. You're starting your own clothing happens. line. That's a goal. That's definitely a goal. But, like, that was never a life goal. Like, it, it, it was a dream. Like, if someone said, like, what's, well, like, one thing you could do? Be like, make Hawaiian shirts, and now I'm hopefully going to get to do that. I think I'm definitely going to get to do that. So I'm about that. I mean, that's false beachwear to the moon. Yeah, keep an eye out, folks. No, but that's all that your your dreams are, right? Your, or your goals are. It's like a dream, but with a little bit of a roadmap. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound too, like, bro here, but, like, I just like to have a little fun. I like to hang out on the weekends, and whatever happens, happens. I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I, I dig it. I think more people need to adopt just a – Live and let live. Currently, the biggest worry in my life, I have a big scab on my knee, and it's really annoying. <laughs> that's that's the worst thing <laughs> happening in Lenny that's, Ball's life right now. It's currently the most annoying thing right now. <laughs> when I woke up, I just felt this scab, like, in my cover. So, you know when you have a bad scab, and, like, you're, like, like it, you feel your shorts hitting it or something? I mm-hmm. felt that as soon as I woke up, and I was like, this fucking scab, bane of my existence. You just got to put a Band-Aid on it. Uh, whatever. It's coming <laughs> off scene, though. By the end of this weekend, it'll be off. Well, what about Key West? Isn't that a goal too? Like, aren't you supposed to be having like your? I obviously traveling's a little yes. bit weird right now. We but... wanted to go to Key West before this. That's like a goal is to go is to road trip to Key West. As dumb as that sounds, I'd love to go to Key West, but uh, we'll see. Because I feel like Key West, like you're you're in the you're in the minority if you're not wearing a Hawaiian shirt and like. <laughs> drinking. I feel like you're the weird person if you're not wearing a Hawaiian shirt and drinking in Key West. So that's why I want to go to Key West. But uh, yeah, another goal I would love to, I would love to see the Northern Lights. Amazing. Highly That's recommended. Cool. See it? Yes. So Where? we went to Iceland and it was the coolest experience. So we went um, in December, so it was fucking cold. But they pick you up, um, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night in these super Jeeps that are just lifted, you know, like four or five feet off the ground. And then you go off-roading into like the snow and the ice and you're trying to like chase the lights essentially. And then when you find them, you kind of like camp out and they bring you um, like a flask of vodka and then a really? flask of hot chocolate. And you just like drink vodka and hot chocolate and watch these crazy lights above you. It's awesome. Anytime I think of something, I'm like, is there drinking involved in it? And the vodka thing sounds good. Oh, the vodka thing definitely was like, 
it elevated the whole experience for sure. Yeah. Well, you've done the Northern Lights. I mean, that's the dream. Yeah, you got to do it. Highly recommended. Iceland. Iceland's like a really cool fucking place too because, I don't know, I think it's the ancestry. Like the Vikings were there. They said it was the land of the gods and there's just like this energy there. This could be another planet when you're exploring. That is cool. That's uh, one of the few times I've watched shows about like Antarctica and shit. I'm like, how is this on the same planet as ours? It doesn't seem like it. Mm -mm. Which is so I don't think of the few times in my life that I've even, like, thought that thought. I mean, this is a very boring one, I guess, in the realm of your life, because I feel like you've been there a lot. It seems like a place you've been there, but, like, Arizona, I think it's crazy. I, like, I went to Scottsdale a few weeks ago, and you're just, like, you land, you're just in an Uber going to, uh, going to like, a hotel, and there's 100-foot rocks everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like and Mars like, a little what bit. What the fuck is this? Yeah, it's like Mars. It feels like you're on Mars. Mm-hmm. Because, right, like, yeah, outside of that, I mean, I'm not the most travel versed. I've never been to Europe. I really like to go to Europe. I want to go to Germany. I want to do, like, an Oktoberfest. Oh, that would be fun. If you go, you have to go in like the full garb, though. Oh, I love my lead. I have a leader hose and I wear it for Halloween every year. It's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> it's it, amazing. Like, like, talk about a vibe. Like, you have a good vibe when you're in a leader hose. Like, that's <laughs> it's that's the vibe. You can't even be angry in one. No, like it's, it's a leader hose is the Halloween version of a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I love my leader hose and it's amazing. So I want to go there. I'm not, not I'm not going to lie. I, I like a girl in a drindle. A drindle is a nice look. What's a drindle? That's like what the girls wear in October Fest. Like the skirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, if I only have like the big things of beer. Uh-huh. I like a drindle. I think I have a drindle fetish. I love okay. a drindle. That's got to be a thing. That's a joke. It's not really an actual fetish, but I do love a drindle. Got to be one. No. Love a drindle. So yeah, I like a leader hose too. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Germany and maybe like Denmark. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I, I, people in Europe, everyone's like, Italy and France, honestly, could care less about Italy. I'm, I'm always disappointed with France. I went to the south of France. We are actually in Cannes, and it was the worst place I've ever fucking been. So we rented, um, we rented a boat, and we pulled up to the, you know, the mar- one of the marinas there. We went to get off to get some food, and it was so hot. We were there in, like, the peak of summer. So I'm wearing jean shorts and a bikini top. Like, you know, standard for a beach town, right? Especially in France where, like, you have nude beaches. So I'm walking around and we're trying to find this restaurant. I see men running, um, like, jogging, not wearing a shirt. I see women jogging in, like, a sports bra. Like, typical stuff, right? Like, so I'm not by any means, like, being inappropriate by my bikini top and jean shorts. I have the cops pull over. And they tell me that I need to immediately get a shirt, which I don't have when it's on the boat. So yeah, what the fuck? I swear to God, she, and it was a chick cop too. So, I mean, starting there, but she, uh, she's like, if you don't immediately get a shirt, we're going to arrest you. And I, I was like, that. Eric, get your phone out. I'm going to at least go viral if I get arrested for wearing a fucking bikini top in cans. So after that, I will never go to France again. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I only really know Can from the one episode of Entourage that they did in Can, and it seemed like a great time. I know, and when I told people that that happened, they're like, they were just messing with you because that's not a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah so, but yeah, France and Italy. I, I'm Italian too. I just don't really care about it. I don't. It doesn't alert me. Germany mm-hmm. looks fun. Like I said, I I do have family in Denmark. Actually, I like do Denmark, like Austria. I think would be fun. Mm-hmm. I want to like yodel in the mountains. Very attainable goals, Lenny. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just I don't know. Just want to go to Europe. Maybe go to yeah. Vegas. Really, I would just like coronavirus. Then I want to go to a bar. Oh, I know. I don't know what we're gonna do because obviously we we have two like bar restaurants and it's just like a weird freaking yeah. time for that. How's, how's North Carolina? What are your like uh, laws right now? As far as like other states go, I feel like we're pretty relaxed. Um, yeah. I think it's like still 50% capacity, which kind of sucks for restaurants because it's not um, really doable. We have like a really solid outdoor space, so we can kind of pack that out. And then you're supposed to wear a mask going into any any building or business, but whether or not people do, it's kind yeah. of a coin toss. We, we're, we're tonight starting the uh, 10 p.m. Everything's got to close at 10 p.m. Ours has been um, 11 for like a month, I want to say. I feel like with the – hopefully the uh... – vaccine comes out soon I, like, oh, I just want the summer that's all i want i just want the summer just give me the summer that's all i want i think i'm gonna move this summer i'm gonna move to the beach like i just want the summer that's mm-hmm. all just give, just give me my summer i think that's probably doable my guess is june i remember it was just so funny friggin uh, as like when this started like i remember texting like all well, my friends were like texting each other we'd be like 
all right, let's just shut the country down for two weeks and we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Like we, we would talk and be like, all right, I think like June will be good. Maybe August, the latest an hour in like November. Uh huh. So, yeah, nothing. it's wild. I had the same idea too. I think everyone was like, okay, two weeks, we got this. Like it's going to be really weird and apocalyptic, but two weeks, we can do two weeks. And now it was so weird when it first started. Mm hmm. Like it was like such a treat to like go on your porch, but it was kind of fun. Not, not that it was fun, of course, but like just not being able to leave your house. It was kind of, I felt like I was in like grade school again. Mm-hmm. Like I just played Call of Duty with my friends every night. Like it was in, and just got drunk by myself. Like it was, it was fun. It was nice. Like I love going out. I love going to bars, but it was kind of fun. Like knowing like everybody wasn't, no one else could go out. Yeah. Everyone was stuck at home too. Kind of like a snow day. It was like a permanent snow day. Yeah. It was, like, it was like a permanent snow day. And it like lost its, it lost that whole fun allure. I would say after like two weeks and you're like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. I'm, I miss people. It was, it was definitely, definitely odd. But, hey, hopefully it'll be done soon. Simple asks. I, just, it's, I mean, it's not a simple ask. It's a lot of months. But just give me a good summer. That's, mm-hmm. all, that's all I need. And then I'll be a happy boy. Well, Glennie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, well, this is my pleasure. I had a fantastic 54 minutes. Do you want to tell everyone where they can like follow you? Keep up to date with all things oh, Glennie? Yeah. If, you want to, if you want to follow Oh, me, you're welcome to. I, I think I'm Glenny Balls on Instagram, and no, no, uh, nothing else in there. But on Twitter, it's Glenny underscore Balls. I gotta get that. I gotta get that on Twitter. I gotta get that underscore out there. Mm-hmm. And also, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash Glenny Balls Barstool. And anything else? Anything else that I could plug? Nothing. No, oh, Booze and Burgers on Instagram. If you want to follow that, that's my burger Instagram. Thanks. Oh, I didn't know you had a burger Instagram. Oh, I did. I'm trying to grow it. We're only like 2,000 followers right now, but okay, I'm okay. trying to grow it a little bit. We're growing organically. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, well, I will uh, I'll talk to you soon, Glenny. All right, thank you. This was fun. See you later. I'm going to text you those logos. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please do. Okay. Later. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have the time, please rate and review, and you can always hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest episodes. I hope to have you back.